Hi, my name is Brad Bearden. I'm an implementation specialist, and today I'll be going over the sales quote. To get to the sales quote window, I can click the sales quote icon on the toolbar, or I can go to the sales menu and choose sales quote. When the sales quote window opens up, I can look up an existing quote by clicking the magnifying glass to the right of the quote number field. In this case, I'm going to create a new quote, so I'll click the new button in the upper left hand corner. After clicking new, the cursor moves down to the customer field. Here I can type in a customer, or I can click the magnifying glass to look up an existing customer. If I type in a customer that does not already exist in Activate, I'll be prompted to add that customer. In this case, I'm going to look up and choose an existing customer I have set up. Since I chose an existing customer, some of this information is going to pre-populate for me. For example, the billing address, shipping address, and contact, as well as the terms and branch, all default based on this customer I have chosen. You may or may not have all this information filled in, so depending on what information you have at the time you set up your customer, you may have to choose, for example, the terms or the branch. Now that I've chosen my customer, we can look at the other header information at the top of the quote. I have the date field, which represents today's date, the date I created the quote. The location field represents all of the predefined shipping locations. I can choose one of these locations and the address will change on the quote. However, if I don't have an address set up that I need to ship to, I can edit it on this quote. That address, though, doesn't get saved in the customer record for future use. It just gets saved on this quote. The PO number field represents the customer's PO number. The reference field is just the text field, which can be used to identify the purpose of the quote. The status in the upper right-hand corner indicates to me that this is a quote. Below that, I have the workflow status, which is a configurable list of statuses. In this case, I have the workflow status configured to default to no pick required when I create a new quote or sales order. Again, we can edit the billing and shipping address as necessary here by clicking the pencil icon. To the right of that, we have the contact information. Again, there's a drop down menu which allows you to select predefined contacts set up for this customer. Or if you don't have a predefined contact set up, you can type in information here on the fly and it'll be saved specifically for this quote. If you wanted to change the contact information, you'd click the drop down and choose the other contacts. In this case, I'll choose a different contact. You can see the information updated for the contact. Below that, we have the ship attention, which indicates the ship to address is ship attention. The next row below the billing and shipping address is the terms, branch, ship via, service, and expected date. Again, the terms and branch may default based on the customer. Uh, however, you can choose from the available options there. The ship via will also default based on sales order and quote configuration and configuration manager, but you can choose one of the available ship vias, which will also set the service. The expected date is the expected ship date. We use the word expected here because this is a quote, and depending on when your customer accepts the quote, that may or may not be a valid date, so you, you may end up having to edit that date. Now that we have the header information set, we can begin to add products to the sales quote. To add a product, you can type in the product ID or you can click in the product ID field and look up a product. First, I'm going to type in a product ID and I'll press tab to move to the quantity field. If you were to type in the product and hit enter, it'll move down to the next row. I've added product B15. Now that I'm in the quantity field, I'm going to update the quantity. If I had pricing rules set up for this customer, my price code field may default to a particular price code. In this case, I don't have any price rules set up for this product and customer best. So it's displaying an asterisk indicating that it's going to use the list price, which is $3.95. I can override that list price if I need to, or I could choose from a list of available price codes. And here I can see all the price codes associated with this product. Again, the customer best isn't configured to default to one of these, so it didn't automatically default to it, but I can choose one of these. In this case, I'll choose the dealer price code, price code R, which updates my price to $3.30. Now that I've set the price, 
I can change the pricing unit of measure if necessary. I've set a price code of R, however I may choose to give an additional discount on this line and to do that I can click in the percentage column and type in my discount. So if I wanted to give a 10% discount on this line only, I would type it here. And that's updated my price. I'm going to add another product. This time I'll look up product button. I'll edit my quantity and leave the price as is. I may choose to add special instructions, which I can type in here, or I can click the button to pop out a window to fill those in. I also have a reference field if I have any reference information specifically for this line. Now that I have my product set, I can add any comments, special instructions, and shipping instructions to the bottom. The comment field is a drop-down that allows you to choose from pre-selected comments. However, you can also manually type in any particular comment you want. Special instructions are typically internal instructions that do not print on any of the default forms. Shipping instructions are instructions that would print on the pick ticket and pack list. On the shipping tab, we see some additional information related to shipping. We see the shipping address, ship attention again, as well as the ship via and service. We also have the route and stop, if that information is relevant, the FOB, and the shipment dates. Again, this order is expected to ship in seven days. As we see at the top, it says seven days left. We have a follow-up date field which allows you to specify a date in which you need to follow up with the customer by if you haven't heard back from them regarding this quote. The not before and not after dates are related to the ship date, meaning do not ship before this date and do not ship after this date. On the customer tab, you can select a contract if you have one set up for this customer. The contract is a pricing mechanism. We also see the customer type. We also have marketing code. The marketing code is a user-defined list of how this order came to you through which marketing method. In this case, I'll choose one of our options. I'll choose radio. The purpose of this is going to be for reporting purposes. In the future, you can run a report that'll show all the orders that came through the marketing code, radio, newspaper, etc. Also, have my tax code. Best is listed as a taxable customer. Payment tab displays the terms and allows you to enter in payment information if you have it. Additional info for quotes brought in through a web store, the web order number field will be populated with that web store's order number. For our EDI customers, the EDI store number will be filled in if that's supplied. Under the sales section here, we have the class, which relates to the QuickBooks class for QuickBooks class tracking and the customer salesperson. We have reference to, which is an additional reference field, a text field allowing you to put in additional information that may help you understand this quote, as well as the job, again, which is a text field, allowing the user to enter in any particular information. The notes tab allows you to add notes. The notes tab is common throughout the system in multiple windows, such as the product, purchase order, customer window. If you have our business activities module, you will be able to see a list of all the business activities that this quote is linked to. Finally, the email tab will keep a history of all the emails sent out relating to this quote. If you have Outlook, you can drag and drop emails from Outlook into this window as well. I haven't saved this quote yet. The quote number will fill in automatically when I click save, and the number will default to the next number in the sales order quote numbering scheme. If you don't want it to default to the activate quote number, you could type in your own quote number here. In this case, I'll click save so that it assigns it the next quote number. Okay, now that I have my quote saved, 
I can either print the quote to send to the customer or I can email it. To do that, I would click the downward arrow to the right of the printer icon at the top of the quote. And here I would choose my option. If I don't click the downward arrow and click just the printer icon, it will print out the quote into a print preview screen in which I can print it out. Now let's say I've sent this to my customer and my customer responds. If the customer has accepted the quote, I need to update the status of this. So to do that, I'll click Edit. And I'll click the drop down menu in the upper right hand corner. The status of booked and scheduled are order statuses. So if I choose one of those, this quote will get converted to an order with the appropriate status. If I click Rejected, that means that the customer has rejected this quote based on some of the terms set here. Maybe they don't agree with the price, the quantities, the amount of time it takes, whatever it may be. Choosing Rejected will indicate that your customer has rejected your quote and this quote is no longer active. Canceled, on the other hand, indicates that this quote is being canceled. In this case, let's say my customer has accepted my quote, so I'm going to change it to scheduled. Changing it to scheduled converts the quote to a sales order using the same order number, it automatically saves the order, and you may have noticed based on my configuration, my workflow status has now updated to be ready to pick. I can now begin processing this sales order. This was an overview of the sales quote process. Thank you for joining me.